Hey friends, welcome to another tutorial. Let's dive right into shooting in Unity. Gotten several requests, um, specifically with physics and shooting. So let's go ahead and jump into that. We have this um, cannon here set up in our scene. And I have a prefab for our kind of cannon ball and we'll just go over how to set that up real quick so let's go into create and well we actually will do this in our hierarchy view view we'll right click and do a 3d object and we want to set up a capsule and with this capsule here See, we want to change the size of it. So maybe something like 0 0.2, 0 0.2, 0 0.2. And I'll just call this uh, pill for now. And if we want to set up some sort of material for this right now, we can just right click create and we'll get a material. We'll name it, and then for now, we'll just change the, the color, maybe like this nice orange here. So now all we need to do is we can literally just drag this right onto our pill. There we go. And we could even make this a little bit more uh, metallic. Awesome. So now we've got this pill here and I'm going to go to my prefabs folder. We just want to set this up as a prefab because what we're going to do is when we click the mouse, when we click to fire, we want it to shoot out or launch a ball or this pill or whatever projectile you want to create. So I'm going to drag this pill down here to my prefabs and now we've got the pill with the material and everything that we have set up. So in our scene, I can go ahead and delete that. Now there are a couple things with this that we've got to cover, and that is we have a capsule collider. So it's going to collide with other objects, but if we want it to kind of fall like a bullet or a cannonball or whatever would be, we are also going to need a component on here that will give it mass and it have it be affected by gravity. So that is our rigid body. And you can just type in rigid. We find the first one rigid body. We'll add that in. And you can see here we've got our mass, use gravity. There we have it. So we got that now. And now what we need to do is we need to have a script in here. And I don't have a scripts uh, folder created yet, but you can create one Usually after I've created a few scripts, I'll create a folder. For now, we can just create our script and we're going to name this launch projectile and hit enter. Now you want to name it right the first time. So a tip on there, if you name it wrong, um, starting out, I would just go ahead and delete the script, recreate the script and name it. Um, so you don't want to do renaming it right now. I would just name it correctly the first time or delete it and recreate the script. Now, where do we want to put this script at? So currently my Canon here, you can see the pivot point here is kind of down in the middle and where kind of where it would rotate being able to rotate up and down. Okay. So that's not where we want the projectile, the ball, or the uh, pill to be shooting out. So we need to have like a muzzle fire point area. So I want to create an object that's going to be specifically that. So I'm going to go ahead and right click uh, in this empty space here. And I'm going to create an empty. And this empty here, I'm going to, over in the inspector, we're going to name it fire point maybe i'll capitalize the p and hit enter 
Now, currently the transforms are kind of a little all wacky right now. Um, I'm just gonna go ahead and click the three dots and reset that. Another tip that's really helpful when you're creating uh, these new game empties or even a new 3D object, we wanna go ahead and click the transforms uh, three dots and reset that. So then I'm gonna go ahead and drag this and onto our cannon because I want it to be a child of, of the cannon here. And you can see now our transmit gizmo updates. So what we could do, click the three dots again and reset that because we parented it. So now when we click the three dots, what that does is it reset the transforms to line up with our Canon's uh, parent. So what we're gonna go ahead and do is you can press W or go to the move tool and we're going to pull this out to the end of our cannon here. Okay, now the green arrow, the Y, is the direction that it's going to be coming out. So we actually need to rotate that. So we can then do E or use the rotate button at the top here. And we'll go ahead and rotate this. And a little trick here, I'm pressing W and then I go back to rotate, but we could also hold control and you can rotate in increments, which is really nice. And if we look at the blue, really right now, that's what we wanna kinda of line up at. I could turn this to isometric, so I could just kind of get this side view. I could click the views here, and then now you can see, okay, coming out of this cannon, it's gonna launch right out that direction. That may not be exactly where we want it, and that's okay. Um, can click back to go to perspective, and there we have it. So I use those shortcuts a lot, W and E for move and rotate. So there we have ready to launch out a projectile in that location. And later on in the future, um, let me know in the comments if you would like to see how to set this up for using our mouse cursor to rotate, whoops, we could have it to rotate the base. Um, as well as rotate the the cannon up and down wherever our, our mouse is. So we could do several fun things with that. But let's go on to firing or launching, shooting our projectiles here. Okay, so let's now open up our script. So you'll double click that. And here you'll see it'll open up Unity. And I've got multiple screens here so once it opens and then I can move it over there we go okay so you'll notice here at the top our first three lines is our namespaces um, that has additional pre-written code that we get to pull from we have our public class which is the script and here is the name of the script which has to match exactly the same as your file and then we're also inheriting behavior from mono behavior. Now we have our start function here, which we're not going to need. We can delete that. And I'm going to space down, hit enter a few times. We've got to put our variables here at the top of our script, which would be line seven. So the first thing is we we need to know, okay, which projectile do we want to launch? The ball or the pill? Well, right now we're not gonna specify, but we do, we do want to put in a game object. So what we could do is for now, we could do public and we'll do uh, capital G and capital O game object, which is a class um, that's uh, specifically going to get the type the data type is game object from 
the Unity engine. And this variable, we're just going to call projectile because it could be a bullet, it could be a cannonball, it could be uh, that uh, golden pill that we created, it could be umbrellas, elephants, or monkeys. Who knows? Whatever you're wanting to fire out of this cannon, right? So for right now, nothing is assigned, but we're going to say we are going to have a projectile that we're going to launch. Now, about what what is the velocity? We might want to set that later on. Um, so we're probably going to add that in here. But let's go ahead and get in our void update. So this is going to be called every frame. So the game's running every frame. So every frame it's looking for something. So we could, for right now, we could just set it off simple and say, hey, we're looking for the mouse click, which Unity has an input set up for that called fire one. So what we're going to do is we're going to write an if statement because we got to know, are we clicking the fire button or not clicking it, right? So we're going to say if, and then in parentheses, we're going to say input dot get button down, and then parentheses, quotation marks, we're going to then put the name of the button, and we're getting this directly from Unity's setup for inputs, and for the mouse button click, it's going to be fire one. So, and then all I simply do is after the parentheses hit enter, it automatically spaces it down. We'll put the curly braces and then I'm just going to hit enter. Boom. We got the right spacing, nice and organized. Now, when we press fire, we want to instantiate which is a, a way of cloning a replica, right, of the original object, which we have in our prefabs folder, right? We want to clone that in the game and it be launched out of the cannon. Let's look at the instantiate format first. So instantiate, couple questions. What is the object that you want to shoot or launch, right? So for instance, you would write a variable for the game object and whatever you want to name it. And then how do we instantiate that object? So this is kind of the format. So you'd instantiate, and then in parentheses, you'd have the object, the position that you want to instantiate it, and the rotation. So kind of a breakdown of that instantiate example. For example, we have game object, we have a projectile prefab, whichever one you want to assign. And that would look like this. You have the data type as a game object, the variable name projectile object, and then the method we're instantiating, whatever the object that we want to use, the position, and the rotation. And the first thing is, what is the object that you want to clone? Okay, well, it'll be whatever we assign to projectile. Nothing is assigned to it yet, but we're going to go ahead and type in, okay, projectile. Okay. So that's what we want to instantiate. But after we instantiate, we want to put in the position, which is the transform, right? So in this case, we can put transform dot position. And then we need to have a rotation, even though we're not having it rotate right now, what we can do is just type in transform dot rotation and then to end our statement we need to put the semicolon and there we go now we're instantiating that so it's literally just gonna put it right at the fire point so what we can do let's go ahead and save this And then we'll switch over to our Unity. Here we have our fire point. We'll go ahead and add the launch projectile to that. Because this script is on our fire point, it is going to use that the transform position and rotation of the fire point. 
So now you can see that our Firepoint object, we have the launch projectile script and it's asking, okay, what projectile, what game object do you want to fire? That's, that's the question. Right now, nothing is assigned. So we'll go to our prefabs. Now, this is where we have to assign this to the variable, right? The variable is just a placeholder, like a box, a container. The projectile is saying, hey, whatever you put in this box, I'm going to then do whatever behavior you told me to do, which in this case is to instantiate it. So we can go ahead and throw in, let's do the ball first. And if we save this, control S, and then we'll go click play. Then when I fire, boom. So, and we could go ahead and try that with the pill just to see what happens. We'll click play. And it's literally just dropping it right out. You almost can't see because of the uh, the lighting here. Let's do 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 do. It's like dropping little missiles or something right there. Maybe I should have called this missile. That sounds good. Good idea. All right. So, and I just turned off the lighting with this uh, light window here. Cool. All right. So now we're we're instantiating it. But as you were probably wondering, you were like, "Hey, uh, that's not launching it out right now. It it just kind of dropped it right there." Right, because it's instantiating it, but we need to actually add a force. We need it to go out. And there's a couple different ways we could do this, but real quick, um, what we could do is we could we could take this, and we want to get the rigid body, which has the mass and gravity, and we want to add force to it. So Unity has a couple features that we can use to do that. So the first thing is we need to assign this to an, a, var a variable to be able to get the rigid body and then add force to it. So what we're going to do is I'm going to assign this to a variable. So we have to specify what's the data type. And so in this case, um, we're going to make it a game object. And we'll just call it uh, What's a good, we could say, um, we could do launched object for now. Why not? Launched object. So then on the line below that, we're going to have to get that object. And we're going to use the dot operator. So what it's going to do is it's going to grab that object and it'll be whichever one. So if we just click on the ball here, you can see for our ball, we have ball and then we want to get the rigid body. So to get any of these, essentially, we would put the dot operator and then we can say get component and then in brackets which component do we want to get well the component the type is going to be rigid body and we have to spell it exactly the same as the component so capital r lowercase b Right. Then we put our parentheses because the get component is kind of like a method. So this is like a shorthand way of, of getting that. Then we got we get the component. Then what we want to do is we're going to use the dot operator. And of the rigid body, we want to add force and what we're going to do is add relative force 
and you can see this adds a force to the rigid body relative to its coordinate system. So that's what we want. So, and then when we add the relative force, we're gonna have to add in the, the force. So in this case, it's going to be the X, the Y, and the Z. Now it's giving me errors because you can't just put X, Y, and Z. You have to put, because it's think it's acting like these are variables, but these are the coordinates you could say. So if you remember the Y is the green arrow we have coming out of our fire point, that's what we want. And we don't want to put in a number like say, you know, 750 because then we'd be hard coding it in and then we'd have to change that if we use this multiple times in code, which will end up happening in the future. So we don't wanna, we wanna put that as a variable. So what I'm gonna do is up here, I'm gonna go ahead and create public and this is gonna be a float like a decimal place number and we'll call it um, launch velocity and here we'll set that to seven 750 and we'll put an f because it's a float in our semicolon which means here where we put 750 we're just going to say hey use the variable launch velocity which currently is set to 750 so anytime we want to change that it'll be real easy to change this in the inspector it'll show up here once we save this so let's go ahead and save this to control s now, we still have the X and the Y, uh, or I'm sorry, the X and the Z. So the Z is just going to be zero. We're not adding any force. And we specifically here, instead of X, what we're going to do is we're just going to write new vector three. And then we're going to say zero. is our X and because we're saying new vector three, the new vector three, we have to put in parentheses, all of these. So we're saying add relative force. The, the force is gonna be a new vector three. And then we put the parentheses, which is the X, Y, and Z. So, and the Y is where we're forcing it along, right? So now we can save that. And then we, you can see it just updated here, our launch projectile. Now we have the 750. So now we can come back in here and we can go ahead and hit play. And we can fire away. And then here you can see we could test it out. Let's say let's do 900. Yeah, all right. Very nice. They turn off play, it resets everything. So maybe I like 900. We'll start with 900 and click play again. And it's going just a little bit too fast that it's going higher. So it might have to do like 800. There we go. Boom working nicely and we can simply change out the pill with the ball now and click play and we're able to fire the the ball you could even create a particle system to fire out of here as well we could go to our hierarchy right click create and we want to look for effects particle system and then here we could set up our particle system. That'd be another tutorial for another day. We'd go over, you'd, we'd have to go over all the settings here in which after we set up the particle system, you would just then drag it to your prefabs and you could have a prefab of that particle system with set up properly, like maybe a shotgun blast or who knows, a laser beams, all, all kinds of stuff that you could do with that. So let me know in the comments if you'd like to see anything about effects or particle systems in there. Um, for the next part, more tips and tricks 
you'll see over here. Um, so click that link um, and check out the playlist for more content. So subscribe and we'll see you next time for another tutorial. Hey, you're still here. Yeah, click subscribe. <laughs>